And today, we're going to talk about my favorite type of fish, pufferfish. I am super excited to talk to you today about pufferfish. Puffers are some of my favorite fish out there, mostly because of their personality. I just, I, I don't see any other fish, um, at least not in the aquarium industry or even in the wild for that matter, that have the personality that pufferfish do. So as with any of these videos that I'm doing, I like to break down things down into groups. So we're going to break them down into small, medium, and large pufferfish. But before I start breaking things down, why don't you leave a comment below, let me know what puffer fish you have ever kept in an aquarium, or if you haven't kept one, what one would you love to keep? Okay, let's get started with the small puffer fish. Now, these guys look a little bit different in body shape than the rest of the different kinds of puffers, um, and that's gonna be the Valentini puffer. You can see they kind of have an elongated nose. They look, almost kind of reminds me of like duck face. So the Valentini puffer, they're gonna stay pretty small and so will the blue spot puffer. Now the blue spot puffer, I've also heard them referred to the Fiji blue spot, um, but it just, the name varies from place to place. Now both of those two are gonna stay relatively small, about three and a half to five inches, give or take. So um, when it comes to tank size, you can probably keep them anywhere from a 30 to a 50 gallon and they'll be good. The next group of puffers that we've got are the medium-sized puffers, and I guess maybe they're not really that medium because some of them are upwards of a foot in length, but that is going to be the dog face puffer. Now, one cool thing about the dog face puffer uh, is that in addition to having that elongated nose, you can get them in a couple different color patterns. Now, some fish will change color based on their mood, but the dog face puffer, sometimes I've seen them have really, really dark brown bodies, but I've also seen them almost a, a light brown with black spots. And I've even seen a golden bellied dog face puffer, the absolutely beautiful, beautiful fish. So um, keep an eye out at your local fish store, see if you can't find those. The next one is going to be the immaculate puffer. Again, um, that's gonna be in the medium size range. I don't see those that often um, in local fish stores or even online for that matter, but they are out there and that is an option. The next puffer is going to be a burr fish. While it doesn't have puffer fish in the name, it is a type of puffer. One cool thing about the burr fish is, as you can see, you can actually see their spikes. They're sticking up, unlike all of the other puffers that I'm gonna talk about today. Um, if you were to handle them, it almost kind of feels like a pine cone. Um, and when they get stressed out and they inflate, that's just gonna be like a big balloon, really, really tough spice. Now, the last medium-sized puffer is our porcupine puffer. Now, in my opinion, these guys are probably one of the best puffers um, in the aquarium hobby for you to keep in your home tank. Um, they have great personalities. I've seen them anywhere from like half the size of your pinky all the way up to full grown, and they have wonderful personalities. Now, like the burfish, you can actually see the spines on the porcupine puffer, but they're not gonna stick up unless they're stressed and those puffer fish inflate. Now, our next group of puffers is going to be the large puffers. Um, these guys, most of them get pretty big. Some of them you can get away with keeping in a home aquarium, but there's two that are definitely not recommended, and I'll get to those last. But first up, we have our golden puffer. One cool thing about the golden puffer is that it can come in two different colors. So it could be a jet black, almost um, like a real dark blue or dark purple with uh, white spots, beautiful, beautiful fish. But it can also change colors into a gorgeous golden yellow. Now that doesn't always happen in captivity, but it definitely can. So our next puffer is going to be the Stars and Stripes puffers. Now I'm classifying them as a large puffer. Um, I don't often see them that big in home aquariums, but they do get to be rather large. And they have that signature um, polka dots and stripes pattern on them. They're, they're cool, they're cool fish. <laughs> now, as mentioned, these last two puffers, they get to be giant. I don't recommend keeping them in home aquariums. And it's tricky, especially when they're babies, they look a lot alike. So these two are going to be the starry puffer, or sometimes referred to as the stellatus puffer. Um, I've actually kept one of those when he was a baby. He could fit almost in the palm of my hand, and in the course of six to eight months, he got to be massive, almost, I would say, a foot and a half in length, and he wasn't even full grown. In the wild, those guys can get to up 
four feet in length. So you definitely don't want to get these guys and get attached to it and then have to have a new home for them. Now, the other extra large puffer is the scribbled puffer, puffer <laughs> or the MAPA puffer, as it's sometimes referred to. Now, when they're babies, they do look a lot like those starry puffer fish, um, and, but that's another one that's going to get to significantly larger size, almost um, two and a half, or 2.2 feet in length. So again, it's a big, big puffer, unless you've got one of those really giant aquariums couple thousand gallons, you probably don't want to have one of these puffers at home. That sums up our groups of puffers. Let's head to the kitchen and talk about diet. Okay, let's talk about diet for your puffer fish, right? Now, if you didn't know, puffer fish are carnivores. You might have a good inclination of that if you take a look at their face. They have some pretty intense teeth or at least some of them do. And I'll talk a little bit more about their teeth later on when we discuss the issues that they have. But before we get into foods, I'm curious to know if you've ever kept a puffer fish, what kind of food was their absolute favorite, right? So today's talk about food is a little bit different than any of the other fish profiles that we've talked about because they are such carnivores. Most of their diet is gonna come from a lot of different kinds of shellfish and really intense meaty foods. Now, that's not to say that they won't go for things like nori if you put it in there. I've seen plenty of pufferfish eat nori, but primarily what you're gonna focus on feeding them is a lot of meaty foods. So let's get started with the blister packs. So this is just another different kind of blister pack that you can use. This is brine shrimp. Now that's gonna be good for those smaller puffers like the Valentini puffer or the blue spot puffer. Now, when it comes to large meaty frozen foods, there's a whole bunch of different options that you have out there. I've just got a few of them. It doesn't always have to be um, the brand that is sold in your local fish store, right? So anything that you find at the store, at the grocery store that's made for human consumption is good for your fish. So right here, I've just got like a bulk pack of clams that you can use. Um, I think I just got that from like the Ralph's or Albertsons. Next up, this is probably one of my favorite blends. I have actually used this. It's got um, squid, scallops, and shrimp, I believe, in there. Um, this is actually from Trader Joe's. It's like $7.99 a bag. It's a great variety, um, especially for those puffer the larger puffer fish that are really, really big meat eaters that eat a lot in one setting, sitting. It helps to keep the, those costs a little bit lower. Now, you also have um, your aquarium brands like uh, the Omega One, this is krill, it's kind of hard to see in there, but you can break off chunks, um, large big pieces of krill for them. And then foods like rods, this is a great predator blend. See if you can see in the back, you can see some of those larger chunks and it does have um, little bits of seaweed in there, for, in there for them as well. All right, now something I couldn't find before I started filming this video, but I definitely wanted to include, um, Silver sides, right? So got to give a shout out to reptiles and reefs in Las Vegas for uh, giving me these to show you guys. So several of those large puffer fish are just going to eat these holes. So you could just give it to them. They're going to suck it in like a vacuum cleaner. Another thing that you can use, and I don't often see these at local fish stores, but if you go to the seafood section at your grocery store, um, these are mussels. You can um, sometimes find them at your local fish store, they might come like this, or you might be able to find them mussels in the half shell um, or in the whole shell at the grocery store. So that's a bunch of different options that you have for food, a little bit more outside of the box than some of our other food sessions, but let's go talk about some of the issues that your puffer fish might encounter. Right. So what I did mention when we were in the kitchen is that puffers are incredibly messy eaters. Right? I've never seen a fish that is more messy when it comes to eating as puffers are. So it's really, really important that if you get a puffer fish, you need to make sure that you keep up on your water quality, which means you're doing your water testing, you're doing your water changes as needed, and maybe in between those, um, you want to go ahead and switch out your filter media as often as you can. If you've got those filter socks or the filter floss, um, just go ahead and switch those out. Sometimes it helps if you've got a spare pair pair of say filter socks or some extra filter floss. That way um, you could just go ahead and change it out when it gets messy because if you've got puffers it's gonna get messy. The next thing when it comes to puffers that you might have to worry about is 
when they get stressed sometimes, they inflate, right? They're called puffer fish or balloon fish. For that reason, it's a self-defense mechanism. It's not always in self-defense. Sometimes they'll puff up as a way to kind of stretch themselves, um, but they'll also puff up if they feel scared or threatened. And the way they do that, they've got a special stomach lining. They're able to pull in a whole bunch of water um, and inflate themselves, and those spines on them will stick right out. Now, it can be very dangerous if you are in the process of transferring your puffer from one tank to the next or from your quarantine into your main tank. If it gets out of water and it puffs while it's in the air, it means it's going to have a stomach full of air and you don't want that. So one recommendation is to try and keep it submerged in water for as long as possible, possible and eliminate the amount of time that it's in the air. And if once you transfer it, make sure to kind of watch it for a little while. You'll be able to notice if it's got air trapped in its stomach, it'll kind of be swimming off kilter or it won't be able to stay level in the water. Um, if you see that, you can, this is going to sound crazy, you can try burping it um, and helping to dislodge that air. But before you try burping it, give it some time just to um, swim around. It might be able to dislodge that air bubble by itself. Now the next thing when it comes to pufferfish that you need to worry about is their teeth, right? Now it's pretty obvious on some of them, you can actually see those buck teeth hanging out. And when we were in, in the kitchen, we talked a lot about um, different hard shell things that they can eat, right? So the reason that you feed them all of those really meaty, crunchy objects is to help keep their teeth filed down. And if you don't do that, the teeth can get overgrown, they can have a hard time eating, and you might end up having to uh, sedate your fish to go in and trim those teeth. Who'd have ever thought that a fish would need to go to the dentist? But I've done it before, and I'm telling you, if you can avoid it, do avoid it at all costs. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna talk about is enrichment. I really do want your fish to live their best lives. Uh, happy, healthy fish is going to be well lived in your aquarium. Now, one thing that you can do for puffers, actually there's a bunch of things you can do for enrichment, is you can just interact with them, play with them. Puffers, as I mentioned before, are very charismatic. They are always curious. Um, I guess if you could say a fish was adventurous, I would say puffer fish are adventurous. So they like to explore their surrounding areas. So you can always, like a bunch of other fish, you can switch up their environment. Now, most all puffers are not reef safe. There's always some exceptions and some that aren't gonna be interested in your reef. But for the most part, puffer fish are kept in fowler tanks. So you can switch up the rock work and change things around so it's new and exciting and interesting for them. Something else you can do is change up the flow in the tank so there's a bit of a different current that they have to, um, you know, challenge themselves against. I wouldn't recommend changing your lighting up when it comes to puffers. You'd be amazed at the silly things that can uh, scare them or freak them out. Um, and lighting, I've noticed sometimes um, in the mornings, I've seen puffers puff up when the lights come on, so I would avoid changing the lights. Now, one thing you can do is you can target train them. How cool is that? Puffers are incredibly intelligent fish, so um, you can target train them for when it's time for them to eat. You can have like a little sign out, and when they come up to the sign, you can give them food, and that's uh, station training for the puffers. It challenges them. I've had so many wonderful experiences with target training puffers. Um, I'll try and include a clip here, but if not, check out my channel, Waterlogged. I've got some awesome videos of different puffer fish that I have trained in the past, and it's incre incredible to watch them learn. One last way that you can enrich your puffer fish's life is through tank mates. Now, puffer fish, I mentioned they have really big personalities. They're, they're characters, and because of that, I'm really hesitant to tell you to put them in with other puffer fish. I know people that have kept multiple um, species of puffers together in a tank and they've done fine, but I've also known the reverse and had huge failures. Now, if you do have an extra, extra large tank, it is possible to keep a whole bunch of one species in together or multiple species together, but it really, you're going to need to have a lot of space, like thousands of gallons of tank room for them to swim around. Now, 
If you're not sure if the fish that you want to get is going to be compatible with a puffer fish, you can always check out that fish compatibility chart. Just follow those rows and see if the puffer lines up. But for the most part, I wouldn't put uh, more than one puffer in a tank. Just, just be safe. You don't want to fall in love with the cute little guys and then have your heart broken if something happens to them. All right, before I end the video, I would love to hear if you've got an awesome puffer fish story, I would love for you to leave that in the comments below. Um, if you've got photos or videos, feel free to reach out to me on social media, on Waterlogged, I'm on there on Instagram or Facebook. I would be more than excited to see any of your puffer fish videos, photos, and hear your stories. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.